Hi, this lecture is really important because we are going to talk about the convolution, convolution using Z transform. All right. If we assume that we have a linear time invariant system and its impulse response is known, is given H of N as a sequence, and the input is X of N, and it's required to find the output. To do that, we use convolution. And that's how we write it. Say y of n is equal to x of n convolute over h of n. And to do it, if you remember, we do this summation and it's kind of headache a little bit. If you remember, you have to write every single term and multiply and adding and shift. Now, with using z transform, is easy. Just you can say the output y of z is equal to the input x of z times the z transform of the impulse response. That's great, it's easy. And then after that, you can make the inverse of Z transform to get the sequence Y of N, the out. Let's take a simple example. That's a system, linear time invariant system, and its impulse response is given as 0.5 power N times unit step UN. That's the impulse response. In the future, we're going to call it transfer function. Means the relationship between the input and the output. This is the system. And that's the input, the unit step, U of N. And the output, we don't know it. So the question, find the output. As we explain here, we are going to find the output in Z variable or in Z domain by multiplying them. So first, I want to find the Z transform of the impulse response. If you remember, we did that last lecture. We said that if you have A N U N, the Z transform be equal Z over Z minus A. And unit step Z transform is equal Z over Z minus one. So just we got both of them and then multiply. So that's H of Z Z over Z minus 0.5 because A here is equal 0.5, and the input is unit step. It is Z over Z minus one. Great. Now you find the output, just multiply. Let's multiply them. Okay. Y of Z is equal X of Z, which is uh, unit step Z over Z minus 1, time H of Z, which is equal Z over Z minus 0.5. When you multiply, you will get Z square divided by z minus 1, z minus 0.5. Now I want to find the inverse of y, z to get y of n, the sequence. Well, there are steps, and I'm going to explain it in detail next lecture, but right now let's do it in a simple way. Remember that to find the inverse, it's very important. You divide the expression you have by z. It means you have first to divide y z of z over z. You may ask why you are doing that, dividing by z. I will, I will explain it once just to finish. You will know the wisdom behind this one. All right. Now, I wish now this expression to divide it into two terms. This technique we call it partial fraction. If you don't understand what does it mean partial fraction, let me just uh, give you uh, like simple expression. When I say um, one over x uh, plus um, two uh, over y, what will the answer? So you will say it's equal x y. And then you have y plus 2x. Now, if you have this, and let's imagine that you don't know the origin of this one. We'll cover it here. And the question is, I want to divide it into two terms, 1x and 1y. So what should you have here? So you put constant and you start to do it. So that's mean partial fraction. How to get it back to the original. So that's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just saying I have the expression and I have the denominator consists of two factors. I factor them. But the question is how I find A and B. All right. Well, 
I will just simplify it. I will say common denominator will be z minus 1 times z minus 0.5 and then I multiply a by z minus 0.5 and multiply b by z minus 1 and just let's simplify the numerator denominator stay the same just leave it as it is the top part a b a z minus 0.5 a plus b z minus b we we'll collect the terms z minus 1 z minus 0.5 is you have a z and you have b z so you take z as a common factor so what's left a plus b the other constant term negative sign is a common factor you have 0.5 a and you have b go back to the original formula that's i mean the formula that simplified z over the denominator so this one should be equal to the original expression z over z minus 1 divided by z minus 0.5 now we, uh, the denominator is the same both are the same so numerator should be the same z has a coefficient of 1 z has a coefficient a plus b so that's the first relation a plus b is equal 1 and there is no constant term, you can say 0. So 0 is equal 0.5a plus b. So 0.5a plus b equals 0. Solve these two equations for a and b. You'll find that a is equal to and b is equal minus 1. Now I can go back and put in the, put in the expression the value of a and b. And that's by the way. Uh, this expression it's equal y of z over z so just let's just do it in one step y of z over z will be equal a which is equal to over z minus 1 plus b which is minus 1 over z minus 0.5 so that's the expression of y of z over z now i want to find y of z multiplied by z both sides so you have two times z over z minus 1 minus z over z minus 0.5 you might now know why i did start in the beginning to divide by z because i mean i want in the end to have expression the r close we have in the table always in the table find z in the top and z in the bottom if you, that's make it easy that's why i i divide in the beginning then i multiply it after i finish because i know in that in partial fraction, I'm going to have in the denominator constant, and there is no in the table constant only. There is always constant times z, so that's why I did that. Now, I the, the easy step, compare these terms that you got by the z transform pairs in the table. In any way, you will be familiar with this one is unit step. That's u, n. And this one, if you remember the constant, we did that before, that's a power n if you remember that expression with it and this is your a so our a here is 0.5 so just let's write it it's equal to 0.5 power n u n we well, got it so y of n is equal to 2 u n minus 0.5 power n u n you got u n here a common factor so the output will be 2 minus 0.5n un means it start from zero i can now even uh, sketch it as a vertical axis horizontal axis this is n and this is the output y of n that was the question all right how can I calculate it all right it just i mean simple just take some values n when n equals zero what you get 2 minus 0 0.5 power 0 is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal 1. So the first value will be 1. All right. At 0. And then you have n equal 1. So 2 minus 0 0.5 is equal 1.5. 
so it will be 1.5 at n equal 1 obviously it's decreasing every time Decreasing. oh but i mean it's not, uh, i'm sorry decreasing but uh, this isn't the two but it's in the top so just let's fix it yeah it's start by one let's make our one here and when n equal one the value is equal 1.5 be increasing like that this one is decreasing by the whole increasing that's 1.5 let's take another point when n equal 2 will be 2 minus 0.5 power 2 it means 2 minus 1 half square 2 minus quarter will be 1 and 3 quarter right so increase it a little bit 1 3 quarter what about when you get n infinity when you get in very high number very big number you will know that 0.5 infinity is like 1 over 2 infinity and two, like 1 over infinity will be 0 so this term at n equal to be 0 it will go to n so you can say at the state this one will be increasing till the end will reach 2 and be fixed there so that will be the output if you make it like the equivalent continuous be something start from one and to the C state will be something like that rising exponentially so now we found it we got the output so the output it will start from one as initial and then in the final value will go up to two that's it found the response using convolution and get you everything in a simple easy way without doing the submission I hope that was very helpful. In the handout, you'll find different example. Please read it. It's very good example too. Okay, till till then.